Her name is. Hi everyone, welcome back to Expecting Soon. For today's episode, I just want to let y'all know that I'm no longer expecting, so we should probably change the name. No, I'm just kidding. But yes, um, today on Expecting Soon, I'll be sharing with you guys my unfiltered story of my very first labor experience. How did you know that it was the time to hit the road to the hospital? The night before um, I went into labor, it was like a very chill night, right? I slept late, I was hungry, I had supper. Typically, in my last trimester at, uh, at least, typically I would kind of like wake up early in the morning. Sorry. <laughs> but yes, like I was saying, typically I'll wake up in the morning to go and pee. So I went for my usual morning pee, hoping to jump back into bed. But lo and behold, I went to the toilet, pulled down my underwear. I saw blood. And I was like, wait, why is there blood? I took a photo of my bloody discharge and I sent it to my sister. <laughs> so I asked her like, hey, um, does this look like I'm going to go into like labour? Then she was like, yes, you should probably text your gynae. So I did just that. I texted my gynae and I was like, like, hey, um, I'm actually like experiencing a little bit of bleeding. And then because it was super early in the morning, my gynae hasn't opened his clinic. So we went about our day as usual. We went to have breakfast nearby our house. And then during the ride to breakfast and during breakfast itself, I started feeling like I needed to. I felt like I had like a constant sharp pain in like my stomach area. I couldn't pinpoint exactly where, but it just felt like stomach cramps. Like, you know, the kind of cramps you feel when you have food poisoning. And then it was kind of like, spaced out in intervals right it didn't really like bother me but then it got closer and closer and then i was like oh my god so i texted my gynae again and it was around 10 a.m so the clinic opened like the reception was like yes you need to take your uh, admission letter and go down to your hospital like right now we paid our bill and we made our way to the hospital. For those of you that don't know, the hospital that I chose to deliver at is Mount Alvernia Hospital. And yes, we, we drove all the way down. And then the nurses all like were very like quick and very efficient. Like in five minutes, I was changed into the hospital gown. I was given a cup to pee. I had a whole, I think it's called an, I think it's called an, an, an anima. And okay, I don't know what is it called. But yes, they had to flush out my rectum. And everything was done within five minutes. Shortly after, I was like, okay, today is the day that I'm going to labor. Do you have a birth plan and did everything go according to it? I had a whole birth plan laid out for, for myself because, like, again, I was actually pretty full term. I actually planned to deliver naturally. And I remember, like, packing my hospital bag. I had, like, perennial sprays. I had, like, a whole cooling pad that would be good for postpartum if you give birth naturally. Um, but then, like, it definitely did not go according to plan. Throughout my labour, there were kind of a few complications that popped up along the way. The first being that I did not dilate um, fast enough. So, um, my whole labour took about 18 hours. And within that 18 hours, I had to dilate to 10 cm to start pushing, which is the minimum criteria. But unfortunately, in 18 hours, I only dilated up to 9 cm. And yes, I know to you guys, 1 cm sounds like it doesn't really make a lot of difference, but it does. So unfortunately, you know, that was one of the complications that took, uh, that played a part in me having to undergo like an emergency cesarean surgery. When you go to an emergency CSAC, you actually have two options. The first option is to go through GA, which is when I think they kind of put you to sleep. And then, you know, you will only wake up a few hours later after your baby has been like dissected from your womb, which is not the route that I, I actually wanted to do. But like having known that I would have to go through CSAC, the first thing that I wanted to do was to immediately choose the epidural route because I wanted to be awake for the birth of my child. Like I wanted to at least experience the moment where she was like pulled out, right? So I had this like whole vision in my head. Like at first it was like, oh, I'm going to give birth naturally. I'm going to like, you know, see her being pulled out from under and then placed on my chest. That didn't go according to plan. I remember being built in the operating theatre and then they actually had to up the dosage of the epidural. And I think that caused me to feel very, very sleepy during my surgery itself. So I was like fighting to stay awake. And then I actually fell asleep at the most crucial part, which was when they were cutting my baby up. Uh, after they clean her up, they put her in like a little blanket and then they place her on my chest. And then I think I stayed awake for like 15 seconds. So yeah, that was fun. How do you and your partner support each other during labor? I'm really very thankful for my partner, especially because like I went through 18 hours of labor, which I know that is very typical of like, you know, first time mothers to go through because of, you know, it's your first time your body is going through such changes so it takes usually a longer time for you to go through labor my partner would you know help me like he'll like feed me water he'll like you know take the kidney dish to help me vomit 
you clean my mouth and I think all these small actions when you say it out loud it doesn't sound like it's much but in that moment when you're lying in bed and you're so tired and you're like mentally exhausted and you're so nervous it's just nice to know that at the other end of the room there's someone there you know holding your hand checking on you making sure you're okay like yeah all these moments like i don't say it out but yeah i really really appreciate it describe the moment you first saw your baby what went through your mind oh she's very bloody <laughs> Again, I was high on epidural, guys. Can't blame me. But yes, I think other than that, right? Um, when I was actually fully awake and conscious by the time I was back in the ward and I saw my baby, I think the first proper thought that I had was like, oh my god, like finally. I remember at least maybe for the last two weeks of my pregnancy, every day I would like hold my belly and I would like talk to her and I would tell her like, hey, you know, if you want to come out today, mommy is ready for you. And I would always like tell her like, oh, I'm gonna like show you all this things when you're out and I'm gonna read all these books and we're gonna sing the songs that I sang to you in my belly like and then finally seeing her in person like in front of me I think that's something that I was so excited about and I cried I think I like teared like at least when I first saw her because I, I, I really was super happy that this little being that I felt kicked me in my stomach for like the past 10 months like she's finally here and I can finally see her face and I can finally hold her little hands and her little feet and smell her so it was a very overwhelmingly touching moment for me how did you feel when you heard your baby cry for the first time? Okay, I don't want to jinx it, but like, she's not actually a crier. Oh, please, please, do not start crying. I think what we've heard so far is like tiny little cries. Because we don't get to hear it often, to me it sounds very cute lah and comforts me because like, I always thought that like, hey, my baby is not crying, is it because her lungs are a little bit um, underdeveloped? Actually, when she was born, she had to be like, uh, she had to be wheeled into the NICU because she had water in her lungs because of my complications during my birth and labor. So I remember when the when she, I first heard her cry, I was like, oh my god, hallelujah, she's great, she's got great lungs. It actually comforted me. How did you decide on your baby's name? Her name is Clover, Clover Chu. Um, and the reason why I chose her name is because my name is actually Jasmine. It's named after a flower. My dad named me uh, after the Jasmine flower because he really liked the smell of the Jasmine flower. So when I found out that I was having a baby girl and we were kind of like deciding on her name, um, I actually had a list of names that didn't make the cut. I always wanted like a four letter name. But after like discussing with my husband, we chose Clover because I wanted a name after a flower which is like a little mini version of myself so I was looking for flowers that start with letter C because I wanted her first name to be the same letter as her surname and then like obviously chrysanthemum is too long so the alternative is Clover so that's how she got her name Did you have any funny or unexpected moments during labour? I think everything was pretty unexpected I was pretty excited for the first three hours I was like oh my god yay and then I remember like when the laughing gas first came in like I was so excited to try it and then I took a whiff of it and then I decided that I didn't want it anymore because it has this funky smell and then I didn't realise that you'll be charged for laughing gas until after I saw the hospital bill big shout out um, to anyone who's thinking of getting laughing gas think twice make sure that you know you're putting your money in the correct place because it can be pretty costly Were there any special memories in Mount Avernier Hospital or Mummy Loft? Okay, so I think definitely for both places, they both hold a lot of very special memories uh, for me because for the hospital, I remember like it was the first time I got to hold my baby, it was the first time I got to latch baby, it was the first time that I learned how to hand express, it was the first time that I, you know, got to smell my baby and stuff. So there's a lot of first times. Um, also like another very, very sacred memory that I have. Uh, on the day of my discharge, I remember before we went home, we had a pastoral team um, do a little prayer, a little blessing session for me and Clover before we went home. So that was something that I hold very dear to my heart and then coming here to Mummy Love you know this place is also very special to me because it's where I got to change baby's diaper I got to pump my first full bottle of breast milk for baby it was where I got to learn how to bathe her it's also where I get to you know hear her first cry so I think both places have 
very very special like moments to me and it's not because of the place but more so because of the people who are there in that place who actually guided me through my very initial stages of motherhood. Did you try eating your placenta? Regarding my placenta, that's also another question that I got quite often and no, I did not keep my placenta nor did I try or, or eat it which to be honest I kind of regret because now sometimes I think about how it tastes I do have friends who said that it's um, pretty costly so that was actually one of the reasons why so if any one of you here watch this video and have actually tried your own placenta can you let me know how it tastes because now if I want to find out how it tastes I need to have another baby and I don't think I want to do that one and done if you could give one piece of advice to other expecting parents, what would it be? Okay, the one piece of advice that I will give to other expecting mummies is to never be shy to ask for help whether it's to ask questions that you might be you know very confused about just ask like don't be shy or don't feel scared to reach out because motherhood right whether or not it's through pregnancy or whether or not it's you know after giving birth especially if you're first time mom first time expecting mom it can be very scary it can be very daunting it can be very overwhelming because suddenly you have so many things that you need to read up on I think it's easier when you actually talk to mummies so that they can guide you you know they can share a little bit more about the experience with you so that's actually what I did when I was pregnant and I found it to be very very helpful it helped me to really mentally prepare myself as well as physically prepare myself don't suffer alone don't try and figure it out yourself if you are feeling very very overwhelmed because I think that to be honest, the mummy community is a very helpful one. If any one of you are expecting and you would like a friendly advice or just someone to talk to, someone to share your worries, you can always talk to me. You can drop me a DM and I will try my best to hold your hand through it, okay? Alright, so that's it for today. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!